This is music, and this is an act of betrayal. Welcome to another First Impressions video. In these videos, I share with you my first impressions of the many blind buys I have a tendency to make. Um, but I just enjoy exploring new music and sharing my first impressions with you guys. In this video, I have this stack of CDs, so we better get down to business. Up first, here we have Offerings by Betrayal. This is uh, a dive bomb release and this is this is just no nonsense straight up thrash metal uh, it's not like brutal or anything like that but it has the aggression it has the speed it has the occasional melody as well so if you have a thrash itch this will scratch it i really like the vocals actually they're kind of shouty and have a slight gravelly quality to them as well kind of reminds me a bit of uh, Vinny Stigma, the guitarist from uh, Agnostic Front, every now and then there's a song where Vinny Stigma sings and this vocalist's voice quality reminds me a bit of Vinny Stigma. <clears throat> if you like Thrash, check this out. I also spun this one here, uh, also Betrayal. This is called Death Shall Overcome and this is more of a compilation. It's also a dive bomb release. This one contains a bunch of underground releases, demos, I think, and such from the 80s. And um, I think eight live tracks um, he, down here, the last ones. So eight live tracks from a show they did somewhere also back in the 80s. Uh, it's a bit more rough around the edges. Obviously, it's underground releases. The production is not sharp or anything like that, but it has the underground charm to it. The music is a bit more raw as well, um, and a bit faster, and maybe a tad more primitive. The vocals are shouty, but not as gravelly. But yeah, great stuff too, if you like your underground thrash metal, especially from the 80s. You know, check this one out. Up next, we have uh, The Redemption of William Black by Blaze Bailey. And um, this is the... Th third installment in the William Black trilogy of albums that Blaze Bailey did. <clears throat> My favorite is the first one, Infinite Entanglement, uh, but this one is great too. It has obviously Blaze Bailey's uh, rich voice. You have some voice actors and things like that as well. Um, the style is, you know, the, the style of music that Blaze Bailey has operated within over the last decade i would say so uh, not our maiden um, ripoff or anything like that but surely inspired by iron maiden probably by his time in iron maiden uh, melodic big catchy great stuff if you like the two first william black um, albums i think this one will be right up your alley as well I also finally got around to listening to this one here also, Blaze Bailey, War Within Me. Same style, but there's a bit more variation on this one, and that's probably because it's not tied to a, a concept. Um, it does have a kind of, I guess, kind of like a suite of um, three songs about um, scientists. Uh, so there's a song about um, Alan Turing. There's a song about Nikola Tesla, and there's a song about Stephen Hawking. Uh, the Dream of Alan Turing, I really just like the concept of that song. Alan Turing was a very important uh, computer scientist who was treated horribly because he was homosexual. Um, and just terrible treatment he got, but, you know, at least there's a song to honor him here. Uh, a bit more variation. Uh, a bit more, you know, um, down-to-earth um, qualities to a lot of the lyrical concepts, maybe apart from the, the three scientist songs. Um, great stuff, same style. If you like Blaze Bailey, his rich voice, 
the Iron Maiden-esque, but not Iron Maiden rip-off melodies, uh, all that great stuff. Check this one out. I probably like this one a bit more than uh, The Redemption of William Black, to be honest, but they're both great. Um, in my opinion, uh, Blaze Bailey hasn't made a bad album uh, since he went solo after he uh, left Iron Maiden. Up next, we have this one here, Terminal Velocity by Bloodlust. This is technically not a first impression. I did buy this one uh, on CD, and then a couple of months later, I grabbed it on vinyl. And uh, <clears throat> I listened to the vinyl one before listening to the CD one. So it's technically not a first impression. <clears throat> but this is kind of an EP with four tracks on it, and then you have a bunch of rough, uh, rough, uh, kind of demo uh, versions of some of the songs. Um, speed thrash metal with um, some nods towards traditional metal. Again, if you have the speed thrash metal itch, this will scratch it. It's actually very, very good stuff. Um, the same story with this one here, the um, Guilty As Sin album. Uh, bought it on CD. Then I picked up the vinyl, listened to the vinyl first, and now the CD afterwards. This one has three bonus tracks on it from uh, a demo called Anti-Life. Um, there's a song called Chainsaw. Um, this is great stuff too. I think this one is better than uh, Terminal Velocity, because this is like a real album. Speed, thrash metal, with old school uh, heavy metal uh, nods as well. Um, aggressive but also kind of melodic you do have some some straight up just heavy metal almost hard rock kind of riffs every now and then but yeah bloodlust both this one and terminal velocity <coughs> will certainly scratch that thrash metal itch up next uh subconscious lobotomy by sentinex uh awesome uh, actually the back cover artwork i actually prefer that to the front cover artwork and this is even a redo of kind of a more primitive uh, a piece of cover art i think from the original release this is authentic early 90s death metal so it is nasty filthy and horrible uh, as mark g with a c would say but it's not murky and it's not cavernous because cavernous death metal i think wasn't really a thing back then uh but it, it it's it's early death metal so you have your more death metal uh, kind of you know um figures and riffs and and uh, sections but you also have quite a bit of more thrashy stuff going on but it's great stuff this one is great sentinex uh, subconscious lobotomy old school og early 80s death metal up next, uh, we have Cavalera Conspiracy, Blunt Force Trauma. This is not what the cover artwork actually looks like. This is just the booklet. It's a digipack. I do have the digipack stored safely somewhere else. So Cavalera Conspiracy, Max and Igor Cavalera and two other dudes. Uh, <coughs> Max Cavalera and Igor Cavalera, both known for their time in Sepultura, Max Cavalera left, left in the late 90s, I think it was, and Igor, uh, quite some time later, they formed um, this band here, uh, Cavalera Conspiracy. This is, at the core, I don't know if this is controversial, but at the core, to me, this is crossover thrash. With some groove metal elements to be sure, some death thrash elements to be sure, even I would say some kind of mellow death uh, elements as well, and some hardcore punk elements. Uh, it's great stuff. I gotta be honest. I think uh, this here, uh, this is the only uh, Cavalera Conspiracy album I've heard, but this to me is better than Sepultura after Max Cavalera left. This is actually great stuff. And I was also really positively surprised that um, Roger Mirrit, the actual singer from Agnostic Front, shows up and does uh, guest lead vocals on one of the songs here. Um, 
great stuff. It also comes with a DVD that I haven't watched, but great stuff. Just fantastic. Kind of maybe modern-ish um, crossover thrash with roots in groove metal and also more modern um more melodic metal actually there's some quite technical lead guitar stuff going on that that is kind of interesting i'm not used to hearing that sort of lead guitar uh, with you know max cavalera's voice uh and it it's unmistakable sounds like max cavalera and gotta say really nice to hear max cavalera's voice especially as a fan of you know old sepultura if you like crossover Check this one out. Up next, we have Condemned to Rot by a Nuclear Aggressor. This is, I would say it's borderline primitive, borderline filthy, um, borderline blackened thrash metal without ever being fully blackened, fully filthy, fully um, dirty, um, fully primitive. Um, so, so there you go. It's actually, it's quite enjoyable to me. It took maybe a couple of spins to get into it, but when it clicked, it clicked. It does have a dirty feel to it. Uh, it does have a blackened feel to it. Uh, to me, it seems like there's a bit of kind of, you know, Slayer uh, referencing going on here without it being a ripoff. So, you know, if you like your blackened thrash metal, but think black metal is too much and think that really raw black and thrash metal is too much and then this one might be uh the way to go for you and up last we have this one here exit clause by rain uh rain uh were a i don't know if they're still active to be honest but they were a british thrash metal band uh this one here is from 96 and it does show in the music that this is from the mid to late 90s. This is when metal got kind of weird um, and thrash metal was kind of abandoned by a lot of thrash metal bands. Um, and the ones that kind of maybe stuck a bit to thrash metal would kind of infuse maybe funk metal elements, maybe groove metal elements, maybe industrial elements and you hear that on this album it does have kind of maybe a machine head kind of vibe maybe prong kind of vibe to it you got some groove metal stuff you have some industrial metal ish stuff um, the vocals are not great but not terrible you know i can live with them same thing with the music it's not great but not terrible and i do like the way they have kind of infused it with groove metal they've done it in a way that works for me to be to be honest so this is one of those albums that you know i listen to every now and then and and have a good time listening to it but it's not a masterpiece um i this is the only rain album i've heard so far um you know, given that this is like mid to, to late 90s stuff, and I don't think it's totally hopeless, uh, I do actually quite enjoy it. It's kind of promising. I hope to go back and explore some of their earlier releases from when they were less, like, trying to navigate the weird metal landscape of the 90s. So there you go. Uh, a nice stack of CDs uh, and Pretty much all of it was enjoyable to varying degrees, obviously, but I liked listening to all of these. If any of this stuff seems like something you want to check out, by all means, go ahead, check it out. I think it's all good. Thanks for watching.